So, uh, dear all, my name is uh, Sergey Karaja, and uh, welcome to the webinar um, about correct installation of fans and uh, accessory usage. Uh, this is the first webinar uh, of the series of webinars we will, where we will try to go deeper into the theme of uh, fans and how to use them correctly. Um, all these webinars will be recorded, so you will be able to uh, get a link later on and uh, also the presentation, maybe if you will need to translate it into a language and so on. So. Um, uh, these webinars are uh, made for people who, with different level of knowledge, so I will try to explain uh, things in a simple way and uh, uh, some of the things probably most of you or some of you will already know, so um, uh, I understand you will have questions probably and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Uh, you can write them into the chat. Um, first of all, uh, agenda, what we will discuss today, so fan installation categories. Uh, necessary accessories for different installation categories, uh, how fan is working in the duct system, how flow is uh, acting in the dust in the duct system, um, what you should uh, be aware of when you are installing the fan, and uh, uh, examples of bad installations and consequences. Um, all these things you also can find in our technical handbook, uh, which you can also, you can get one uh, also for free. Um, so first of all, installation categories. All of you probably know ISO 5801 and AMCA 210. In these uh, standards, uh, four installation categories are um, described. So it's uh, installation category A, free inlet, free outlet. Uh, installation category B, free uh, inlet ducted outlet, installation category C, free outlet ducted inlet, and installation category D, uh, ducted inlet and ducted outlet. And uh, these four installation categories are made not, they, they have a purpose, uh, there was a purpose to make such uh, separation. Uh, it's also recommended in these standards to uh, test the fan in the, uh, on the installation category, which will be closest to the future usage of this fan. So, and uh, this is uh, because uh, fan can have a bit different uh, curves, even if it's measured on the uh, standardized test rig uh, in different uh, installation categories. Here is one uh, example. For example, we measured one fan in the installation category D. Uh, here you see the curves of this fan, with the, which was merged with a duct on the inlet and duct on the outlet. If you, for example, measure the same fan uh, on the insertion category C uh, without duct on the outlet, uh, you can get much lower efficiency, for example, and bit different pressure curve. Um, the same uh, you can have uh, for insertion categories A and B. And, uh, why does it happen? For example, um, if you have uh, a duct or you do not have a duct on the inlet, uh, when there is a duct, uh, there is a um, profile of velocity in this duct already developed and you have uh, boundary layers and so on. So you have low velocity near the walls and high velocity in the middle. And this uh, velocity profile is going into the impeller and uh, impeller is acting in a bit different way. Uh, if we will compare it to the uh, situation when you have free inlet and the uh, uh, profile of the velocity is almost equal, for example. Or if you, for example, have uh, no duct on the outlet and you have duct on the outlet, what's the difference? If we will imagine that uh, you have, uh, for example, a high twist on the outlet of the fan, this twist um, makes air go to, to the wall closer. And uh, that's why you have higher velocity uh, near the wall. And this uh, leads to even higher pressure losses than when you have, for example, free outlet when all the air goes uh, spreading into the environment. So be aware, so even if you have uh, a fan uh, which is tested uh, on the standardized rig, it can still have, in the ideal conditions, have a bit different curves. Um, so about necessary uh, accessories, accessories uh, for different installation categories. Um, so if you have, for example, free inlet, free outlet, of course it's needed to use inlet nozzle and safeguard because of the safety reasons. Uh, you need, of course, to use mounting feet with uh, uh, dampers uh, to separate your uh, 
fan vibrations which are appearing in the fan from the base. So um, even if the fan is ba uh, balanced very good, you still have some uh, uh, vibro speeds and so on uh, acting on the base and you should uh, separate it um, or you can have problems. Uh, in the situation when you have uh, free inlet, free outlet, uh, it's nice to have a uh, diffuser on the outlet because otherwise you are losing all your dynamic pressure on the outlet. And if you have diffuser, you are restoring at least something. Um, yeah, such accessories like guide vanes and uh, silencers are also uh, possible on the outlet. But silencer is optional depending on your sound uh, level requirements. Safeguard also, you can put it if there is an option to be for the other people to touch the impeller. Uh, for the installation category B, uh, situation is similar for the inlet. You also should have uh, inlet nozzle and safety guard to make the flow uh, smooth on the inlet. Uh, mounting fit with the dampers to prevent the spread of vibration and also flexible connection on the outlet. Otherwise, this vibration can spread into the duct system and you will have increased uh, uh, mechanical maybe sounds and uh, it's better to avoid this. Um, for installation category C, uh, you should have also flexible connection on the inlet to, uh, 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 to uh, distinguish the uh, duct from the, uh, from the fan. Uh, and um, also mounting feet and uh, uh, dampers to prevent spread of vibration. On the outlet, maybe you also need to have a diffuser uh, to restore dynamic pressure, as I said before. Um, situation with ducted uh, inlet ducted outlet, of course, you need to use uh, flexible connections, as I said before, because of the vibration spread and uh, mounting feet with the dampers. Such accessories like silencer and uh, uh, the damper for the, I mean, uh, air operating dampers are optional. Um, yeah, this is basic things. Uh, so now, uh, if fan is installed in the duct system, we, um, our customers are sometimes confused because uh, of the total and static pressure. Um, and the thing is that when you are usually calculating your duct system and uh, calculating losses, you are getting the difference of the static pressure or total pressure on the inlet and outlet of the pen. Um, and you are giving this difference of total pressures and st or static pressures to us. So if we will consider such a case when you have a um, pen with a duct on the inlet and outlet, uh, so you have some velocity on the inlet, some velocities on the outlet. If you have the same duct, these velocities are the same. Uh, so this means you have the same uh, dynamic pressure. Um, uh, we have some static pressure on the inlet and outlet, and that's why uh, so and total pressure also uh, plus dynamic pressure. And what you are giving us to it's the difference of uh, static pressures or different, which is in this case is equal to difference of static total pressure because the dynamic pressure is the same. Um, and uh, this this is a problem because sometimes a uh, customer is mixing static pressure, which is the difference on the inlet and outlet of the fan, with the static pressure of the fan. According to uh, AMCA and ISO, total pressure of the fan is the difference of total pressures on the inlet and outlet. Uh, and the static pressure of the fan is the difference of this uh, static pressure uh, on the um, outlet and uh, total pressure on the inlet. Uh, that means that uh, uh, it's not equal to static pressure, which you are uh, calculating as a difference of static pressures on the inlet and outlet. Uh, in, and static pressure should be used when the fan is used uh, with a free outlet, like uh, yeah, in uh, category A or uh, in category uh, C. Um, yes, so when you are selecting using uh, total pressure, you are um, uh, yeah, you are getting a bit more than you need. Um, fan efficiency and the curve of the fan. So here is an example uh, of uh, the curve of the XL fan with a high pitch angle uh, of installation. Uh, so here you can see uh, this is the efficiency curve and this is the curve of the total pressure. 
Um, you, you usually see that uh, in any catalog that the curves of the axial fence are uh, at some point uh, cutted and you do not have the rest of the curve, like you have, for example, for centrifugal fence with backward curved blades. And this is uh, because you have a very bad region here. So usually the curve is cut at somewhere here uh, to have some safety, uh, safety here, not to come into the stall. Uh, if you look at the, into the whole curve, you can see that, um, for example, in point one, we have high airflow, um, high airflow, uh, and uh, uh, that means that uh, the angles of attacks uh, are such that uh, the separation of flow is um, oops, is um, the separation of flow appears from the on the pressure side of the blade. We have some questions already? No, I will, I will check. Um, and you will okay, these questions I can ask answer a bit later in the end. Um, uh, so you have, uh, um, for example, for, for high air flows, you have such angles of attack that you have separation of flow on the pressure side of the blade and the efficiency is not high. Then air flow is going uh, lower and the angles of attack is becoming more uh, closer to optimum, but you have still separation of flow. Then you have optimum and you have no separation of flow on the blade and uh, later on the um, air flow is coming uh, low and you have separation of flow on the other side of the blade. Uh, at some point, the separation of flow becomes uh, so big and the angles of attack so bad that uh, it closes all the channel of the between the blades, and this is called already stall or rotating stall. Uh, it's uh, in this region, so you have already several channels which are uh, so first one channel, then when air flow is becoming lower, you have several channels closed with the separation of flow, and this separation of flow uh, is not uh, uh, in some is not in the whole fan, it's in some regions it, and it's rotating. So when you have, for example, separation of flow in this uh, area, you have uh, good flow in other blades and uh, this separation area is rotating in the direction opposite to the rotation of the impeller. So it's uh, very not uh, uh, recommended to work in this zone because the fan can be even destroyed. You have an increased uh, sound levels and vibration. But uh, this uh, is not happening, for example, for uh, centrifugal fence with the backward curved blades uh, and also for the axial fence with uh, low pitch angles of installation. So, uh, for example, for low uh, angles of installation, you, uh, you have just such a um, situation when you, this, uh, stall, uh, then this separation cannot close the channel and that's why you don't have this uh, dramatic fall of the um, pressure. For a uh, centrifugal fence with the uh, black backward curved blades, you also have, can have another type of separation, which is uh, connected to the separation of the from the forward plane of the impeller, and then you have uh, in this place of the curve sometimes uh, change of the uh, pressure. Uh, for the centrifugal fence with the forward curved blades, you can have situations similar to this. You can also have a dramatic fall of the pressure at some point. So also happens there. Uh, so, and about the fan curve and the system curve, um, usually when you have selected some fan for the working point, you are looking at your system curve. So system curve is usually a parabola. Um, in some cases, it's, uh, it differs from parabola, but in, main, in most cases. And uh, your working point is the uh, cross of uh, this system curve and the curve of the fan. Uh, but curve of the fan can change if it's installed incorrectly. So if you have some bad uh, uh, ducts on the inlet, which uh, causes separation of flow and this separation goes into the fan, the curve of the fan uh, is going down and you have already uh, selected on this point and you are getting this one instead of which, what you wanted. Um, and uh, in the following, in part we will discuss which uh, things can lead to such problem. So first of all, you can have a different curve because of you are using uh, another installation category. Then you are having different, uh, a bit different curve because you are using not so not such a good duct system in front or after the fan. 
so flow in the duct system. So the main things which can cause uh, losses are corners, edges, and small radiuses. Um, I most of the things uh, can be, uh, you can look in the technical handbooks and uh, see how much you will lose in, in this or that uh, uh, part of the duct system. Uh, for example, yeah, and of course, uh, uh, in these handbooks, you can uh, find out that um, the higher the speed, the larger the areas of separ separation of flow, and uh, the separation of flow is a pressure loss, so you are uh, having higher losses if you have higher speed. Uh, usually in the, all the technical books, you have a um, loss coefficient, which is, uh, and then the losses are proportional to the dynamic pressure in this place. Um, um, uh, and all these separations, if they are going uh, into the fan, they are causing uh, pressure losses, uh, not only pressure losses, but also uh, just, uh, change of the aerodynamic curve of the fan. For example, uh, if you have 90 degrees bend, uh, if it's made without any radiuses, you have separation in these two places. If it has radius on the outlet and uh, so on the outer part and no uh, radius is here, you have separation here and all this um, can, if you will install fan somewhere in here, you will have big problems. It's always better to uh, make good radiuses with low losses and then uh, you will not have any uh, additional uh, pressure which your fan should make and uh, also you can install fan somewhere not so far from the turn. For example, if you have such a turn with the small radiuses, you have separation of flow here near the radius, um, and it's not uh, uh, recommended to install fan in this area because uh, then uh, this separation is going into the fan, <clears throat> and the blades of the fan are working into this separated uh, uh, area, the area of separation of flow, and this can uh, can lead to destruction of the fan even because uh, the load of the blade on the blades is always changing. If you have, for example, a square uh, band uh, without guide planes, you should uh, also uh, put the fan far away from this band, like uh, it's shown here. You can al always uh, reduce this uh, length uh, using guide planes in the plates in the band, but it's usually too expensive. So um, branch off. So also, if you have, for example, uh, there's such a branch off from the duct, you also have separation in it, and it's not recommended to install fans somewhere near these branch offs, because then you will also have reduction of the curve of the fan, of the pressure, and also increase of sound and vibration, and so on. Um, so installation manuals, I think everybody uh, saw manuals, so, which is coming with the fan. And uh, there are some instructions how to install it, and these uh, instructions should be followed because wrong installation can lead to a uh, change of the fan curve, as I said before. So uh, now uh, in the following slides, we will um, see some examples uh, of how fans should install and shouldn't be installed. For example, if you have free inlet, free outlet, as I said before, you should uh, use the inlet nozzle and the safeguard. Um, <clears throat> because otherwise, without uh, inlet nozzle, you ha will have separation of flow from these parts, and uh, this will reduce the uh, parameters of the fan. Of course, when you're using inlet nozzle, inlet, uh, depending on the radius of this inlet nozzle, this inlet nozzle itself will have some losses, but this you can also check in the technical handbooks, and it will be much less than you will have here. Um, protection grill because of the safety. If you have such situation when you have a chamber in front of the fan, that's very similar to this situation. You also have, if you have no uh, inlet nozzle, uh, you will have here separation of flow, and this will reduce the parameters of the fan. Here you also see the flexible connection, as we discussed before. You should always install flexible connections to separate um, vibration distribution into the duct system. Duct connection with transition pieces. So, for example, if you have such a fan with a duct, which is much bigger than the diameter of the fan, and you have transitional pieces, uh, piece, oops, sorry, uh, you shouldn't make it too short because otherwise you will have here separation of flow and uh, you will have high losses in your system. It's always much better to install a fan with a diffuser which has a opening angle about seven degrees. Of course, uh, here seven degrees is um, more, uh, so 
it can be a, a bit more or less. So uh, you can also check the losses uh, in the diffusions in technical book like uh, Delchik or something similar and see how the losses in the um, diffuser depends on the angle of opening. If, if, if you have uh, such a change from the round to square duct, uh, the situation is the same. If you have a small angle, you also have a separation of flow and it's uh, not recommended to have the um, square smaller than diameter of the fan. Uh, better to use the uh, angles about seven degrees, not higher, and a uh, uh, square which is bigger than the size of the uh, fan. Um, fan with the inlet, uh, such a side duct connection, is also not recommended because uh, if you have such a, a duct on the inlet, you will have separation of flow in this angle which will go into the fan and we will have a situation when, when part of the fan is working in the zone of separation. Uh, as I said before, it can lead even to destruction of the fan. Always better to make symmetric um, opening angle. Uh, so when it's inlet, it's usually you can usually make uh, bigger angles than the, on the outlet because you have uh, not diff diffuser, you have confuser. So the uh, velocity is uh, increasing and uh, that's why uh, yeah, the angles could be um, optimum according to uh, technical handbooks around 22 degrees. Um, fan with the duct on the inlet and the outlet. As I said before, you, can use, uh, you should use uh, flexible connections, but also you should um, think about the uh, uh, minimum distances, uh, minimum duct lengths on the inlet and outlet. It's always better to have about 2.5 uh, diameters on the inlet and outlet to prevent any um, influence uh, from other uh, parts of the duct system on the fan uh, aerodynamics. Uh, for example, in this case, when there is a, a sudden increase of the diameter, of course, it's very bad for the fan work. You have separation of flow here, which is uh, going into the fan. Um, it's always better to use uh, diffuser, which is then uh, uh, you, then you uh, duct around 2.5D and then uh, you will not have uh, any changes in the fan curve. Fan, uh, which is standing in the uh, chamber, for example, you should always think about the distances to the walls. Um, if you have fan which is closing which is standing closer to the wall, then uh, its aerodynamics is all, also going down. So the same when you are having fans which are standing side by side, uh, it's also not recommended uh, to put them closer than 0.5D uh, to each other. Um, suction chamber with flow deflectors. Uh, so I'm, is there is a damper on the inlet and there is just a chamber, it's very not recommended to install like, like this because uh, the flow can have a twist here on the inlet and you will also have, uh, you cannot predict even which curve of the fan you will get. So it's not recommended to do like this. It's better to use a um, damper which is opening in the different directions. So you don't have the twist from the damper and also you, uh, it's nice to have guide planes, uh, plates inside of this uh, chamber. Um, yeah, so here are the recommended parameters of this uh, plate uh, and number of plates. Uh, so minimum five pieces, yeah, eight if, if possible. Um, if you have a, so do you have any, let's check for questions. Uh, maybe you have something to what I already said. Um, if you are using, uh, yeah, so the question is about um, uh, what will be the impact if airflow from impeller to motor. So uh, if you are using uh, other direction from impeller to motor, uh, <clears throat> uh, it depends on the design of the fan. So. Um, you, in some cases, you can uh, have uh, small influence, in some cases not. For example, if you have a motor with a, a impeller for the cooling and uh, it's working in opposite direction, uh, it's sometimes uh, better to use uh, direction from impeller to motor. Um, if you do not have, for example, hub cover with radius, it's also better to use uh, direction from impeller to motor. Um, 
So um, if you have such a chamber with different uh, with air coming from different sides, it's always better to use a straightener um, because uh, you will have air coming from different directions that it will uh, not uniform profile here. So to uh, prevent any uh, un uniformity of profile here, it's better to use straightener. It's like we are making now uh, you know, in the test tricks, uh, always then put in straightener after the, even the damper to prevent any twist of the flow in front of the fan because it's, it, it can influence its uh, parameters. Installation uh, fan <clears throat> before the splinter silencer, the split silencer. Uh, so this is not recommended. It means that uh, if you have angles here uh, bigger than uh, seven degree and uh, um, separation of flow, then uh, you will not uh, have you will have a lot of losses and also the direction of the sound will be not as you were expecting it's always better to use uh, small angles uh, less than seven degree and uh, then it's also nice to put perforated plate to make the profile of un of the velocity <clears throat> even more uniform flexible connections as we discussed before uh, they, um, they should be installed always uh, when you have duct on the inlet or outlet and you need to separate your fan from the duct system not to uh, spread vibrations uh, so flexible connections could be of different type they can they are you, you have we have temperature uh, uh, for temperature for high temperature applications for explosion um, uh, proof uh, applications and so on um, but what you need to know is when you are installing such a Mm, uh, flexible connection you first of all always need to uh, leave right uh, distance between the duct and the fan not to have a situation when for example the distance is too small and the uh, uh, flexible connection is uh, going in or out uh, and uh, or such situation when you have um, not uh, aligned axis of fan and the duct so uh, flexible connection is not meant to be used to compensate any uh, uh, assembly in a crisis. So it's meant to uh, separate uh, uh, duct system from fan vibrations. Um, so for example, if you have such a fan uh, with uh, flexible connections and they were made uh, wrong, so the distance was too, sm too small, and you have the flexible connections going inside of the duct, this was called, will, with, Sorry, this will cause you additional losses. Um, this will cause additional losses, and it's always better to maintain this minimum uh, distance um, to prevent uh, yeah, additional losses which you didn't consider. Um, selection of uh, right vibration dampers. We will go into this theme uh, in the next webinars. But uh, just for your information about the types, so rubber vibration dampers, spring vibration dampers, block elements contain, uh, which, are, which consist from several spring dampers and elastomer parts. These all are used depending on the weight of the fan, depending on the purpose and uh, um, other things. We will discuss this in the next webinar. Uh, here I've showed the, the main access accessories for the Excel fan, so uh, which you, we are providing. So we, here you can see all the accessories which we discussed, uh, like uh, inlet nozzle, silencer, flexible connection, damper, mounting feed uh, um, dampers, um, revision switches, vibration sensors, and so on. All these accessories, your accessories, you also can. Uh, uh, find in our selection tool. So here is a small uh, uh, example how it can be done. So if you are going to our uh, selection tool for Excel fans uh, uh, and selecting some fan for some working point, for example, uh, high temperature fan, uh, yeah, let's select for high efficiency. Um, and going in, you can, uh, first of all, um, uh, yeah, you see here all the accessories. After last update, you can now access uh, a website with this accessory and more information about it. So you can see the sizes and all the rest, what you need. Um, you can use recommended accessories. Accessories. So now um, in the selection tool, we have uh, installation category D. 
presented and uh, you are getting these flexible connections and uh, contour flanges plus uh, mounting feet and uh, um, dampers. We also added a feature to delete accessory if you don't need it, for example, like revision switch, because previously uh, you couldn't uh, delete it uh, from the fan because it was not shown in, on the 3D model. Um, yeah, so such a useful tool when you, where you can select uh, all the accessories for Excel fan, for example. So uh, let's see. I want to talk about the uh, bed uh, installation and configuration, but first let's discuss the questions if you have some. Uh, Um, so, plenum. Problem is, I do not know what does it mean, plenum. So, you mean uh, safety guard or what does it mean, plenum? So, if you will explain what plenum means, maybe I will answer this question later on. Sorry, probably my English is not so good. Uh, so, bad installation and consequences. Mm, so, for example, such installation of the fan with the uh, inlet uh, bed part of the duct. Uh, you can already see, as you saw uh, before uh, in my presentation, that such uh, installation cannot lead to the same uh, aerodynamics of the fan, which was measured on the standardized test rig. So here you have different velocities coming into this uh, part of the duct, and this, the, then this uh, non-uniform uh, profile of the velocity going into the fan. And uh, of course, you will have separation of flow, uh, and uh, this fan will not uh, give you the, the parameters which we were expecting. Um, such installation, as we discussed with the uh, flexible connection, as you see, the flexible connection is sucked in because it's a suction side of the fan. And so here you have uh, the user was haven't uh, used the right length uh, between the duct and the fan, and uh, he has additional losses uh, from this uh, flexible connection, which he can avoid. So the same examples with the flexible connections. You can see uh, how flexible connection is going inside of the duct. Um, here it's also too short and yeah, it's additional losses which you can avoid and uh, save some energy. Um, and what's, uh, for example, uh, here wrong? So you can see that uh, here you, the fan doesn't have uh, dampers, no vibration dampers. That means that um, this fan, is, which is meant for drilling application, uh, will have probably a distribution of vibration from here, spread of vibration from here to the base and uh, additional noises and maybe eventually some problems. Um, such uh, duct, ducts with a, with a sudden turn and such Y connections also very bad uh, for, the, for the fan and uh, changes the curve of the fan and it's additional losses which you can avoid. Uh, such turn uh, also when fan is standing right here, it's of course, you can cannot expect uh, the same aerodynamics from the fan. Uh, such turn of the duct, as we as you saw before, leads to very high pressure losses. Uh, each reduction uh, of the pressure loss in the duct system can uh, help you to uh, select fan with a lower pressure and save a lot of money and energy. Uh, a lot of you are installing uh, fans in parallel when you have um, uh, when you need higher airflows. So when you are using parallel installation, but first let's see maybe there are some questions. Um, Uh, installation of the fan uh, on the wall uh, in vertical position uh, without dampers is, of course, not recommended. It's uh, in the perfect uh, way you should install mounting brackets uh, with some mounting construction and dampers underneath the bracket. 
uh, if you want to install it on the wall, uh, you should use some, uh, if there is no other way except uh, putting the mounting feet ex directly on the wall, uh, you can probably use uh, uh, rubber dampers, which are not so flexible as uh, spring dampers, but of course it's not recommended because the um, force which will act on these dampers will be not as it should be uh, on these dampers. Uh, I will, of course, share the slides of the seminar after this uh, webinar. So parallel installation of the of fans. Uh, so if you want to in, increase the airflow, if the, the fan doesn't give you enough uh, airflow, you are using um, parallel installation and you are expecting to get uh, twice higher airflows when you are using the same two, two similar fans in parallel. So also you, this you can find in our technical book um, explanation how parallel work, uh, how parallel uh, installation works. Um, but uh, if you are installing fans like this, for example, uh, which when fans are uh, working in different conditions uh, and have different, so this fan has separation of flow probably here somewhere, and. Um, then you you will never get the twice the airflow you will get uh, in the best case scenario you will have lower uh, than twice uh, in the worst case you will have problems with the interaction of these two fans uh, which will maybe uh, the air can go through these two fans around and so on <clears throat> for example here you can see example of a parallel installation when two fans are installed uh, in different conditions and uh, of course, you will not have uh, ex expected airflows uh, in this situation. Uh, installation in series. So when you have two fans uh, installed in series, it's usually used to increase the pressure. Um, uh, it should increase the pressure twice if the fans are the same and uh, you uh, have uh, the same conditions, uh, the good conditions on the inlet. But, uh, uh, for example, on this uh, picture, you can see that uh, these two fans are installed in uh, series, but uh, you have very bad conditions on the inlet and outlet. Uh, so uh, you will never get um, twice pressure here. And um, so you should avoid such things if you are using uh, uh, so in parallel installation in in, in series installation series it's like with a single uh, fan so you if there will be one fan here with such installation you would also have uh, not the same curve as you were expecting so in conclusion uh, i wanted to say that uh, first of all to make uh, energy efficient ventilation system you need to um, adapt your duct system uh, with the requirements which I told you about. So you need to look at all your parts and uh, reduce the pressure losses there um, because we can make a very efficient fan, but uh, when, you, when it's installed in a very not efficient system, it's already, uh, yeah, so it's all works together. Uh, you need to optimize pressure losses, as I said, and uh, after, only after this, you should select the uh, uh, right fan for your system. So, yeah, thank you for your attention. You can, let's check for the questions if you have some. Um, uh, if you want the um, technical handbook, uh, you can uh, connect your, uh, some, uh, our subsidiaries or, um, some salesperson which you are which is your contact and system and uh, you could get one it's now available in uh, english and german um we are working on the so the question is when we will uh, have diffusers in the configurator we are working on it so um, we need to make additional measurements and uh, um, I hope that next year we will have it, but yeah, we'll see. I know that it's very important. So 
if you do not have any more questions. Uh, let's see, maybe I've missed some in the beginning. I was not reading from the beginning. Um, ah, when you will uh, put installation category in the configurator, there is another question. So uh, we already have uh, an option to select uh, installation category, but now in configurator you can find only one installation category. It's D, uh, and it's because uh, it's the installation category which is mainly used. Uh, so we are also working on the other uh, installation categories, and uh, eventually we will put it. I also hope that it will be next year, but uh, this is also in our plans. Um, okay. Okay, plenum is a big duct. Okay, so now I can. Um, uh, if you have a big duct on the inlet and outlet, as I said before, on the inlet you should uh, use uh, the right angles of the uh, confuser. So. If it's a cone, then it shouldn't be more than, uh, it shouldn't be uh, less, yeah, no. It shouldn't be around 22 degrees. So you can find in the, uh, I think I looked at a bell check that it was the uh, total angle is 45 degrees around optimum. On the outlet, it should be around seven degrees, the opening of the diffuser. Um, Uh, if you have, uh, if you need uh, curves for the uh, Type B installation, um, you can contact me or uh, uh, our technical department. And we, some of the fans are already tested in Type B installation also. Um, 3D image of the configurated fan in the data sheet. Um, um, to be honest, it's, it was not planned to put it in because uh, it's uh, hard. Uh, so it depends very much on how many accessor accessories you have put it on the fan. So if there, if you put it a lot of accessories, you will have a very uh, long fan uh, with, for example, if there are several silencers and something else, then uh, um, you will not see anything so much and uh, you need to uh, render it in a different window. So it's uh, hard to uh, make uh, uh, such a uh, 3D picture for everybody, which will be a nice. Mm. Uh, for the recommended vertical installation, uh, in general, it's all the same. So you need uh, when you install install the pen vertically, you can you should uh, use the, all the same um, as accessories like uh, I said before except uh, instead of mounting feet, you need to use mounting brackets and uh, mount it in, yeah, or mounting ring, depending on the size of the pen. Um, yeah, some internal questions about CRM and PDF is missing. So, uh, I mean, wiring diagram is missing in PDF. So this, uh, is one of the tickets uh, to the programmers we are uh, aware about this. Um, the, you will get the link of this video and uh, um, the last question still need to print it manually from the configurator. Can you put the wiring in the server? Yeah. So again, wiring diagram and server, but the, this is not for external people, but I, I know about this problem and uh, we'll also add it to uh, CRM, I think, soon, rather soon, I think, in the beginning of next year. So if you do not have any more questions, and I hope I answered all of the questions uh, which you wrote. Um, yeah, so uh, then uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, Wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And uh, if you have any questions or uh, some not clear things, you can also contact me and uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. <laughs>